Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. I am out of my basement today and I'm at another basement dweller's house. My friend Mark Capitella is here. Hey, Lon. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. So, Mark, what do you do in your basement? I am a wooden jigsaw puzzle maker. So I basically hand carve <laughs> custom puzzles predominantly for clients that order them for me, whether they're collectors or they're the corporate industry or the wedding industry or any other unique purpose. And re it's really cool to watch your workflow. And one of the things that I've said to Mark over the years is that people need to see how you work, as it's pretty crazy. His hands get so close to that blade. They uh, do. I think it's really something cool that people should be seeing. And now that we're in this age of content where people like to watch people work, I thought it'd be great to start doing some of this stuff. Now, you have a YouTube channel now, right? Yes, I have one. It's 11 years old, but I've only recently started putting videos up on it, and it's kind of suddenly growing rapidly. In like the last month and a half, you've added, what, like five or 600 subscribers? In the subscribers? last week, it's yeah. over 600 subscribers. So he's on his on his way yep. here, and he can't yet live stream, but we're going to get him there. Yep, 1,000. I need 1,000. I need 1,000. <laughs> so subscribe to Mark's channel. It's great to watch what he does. And what I wanted to do today was just kind of show you how to get a multi-camera studio set up just with the stuff that you have. And we're going to take a look at what Mark has here. Yep. And whatever he's got, we're gonna to try to make it into a two or three camera studio for him to get started. And then as you grow your audience, you can then figure out what you need to make things work a little bit better. All right, so before I came down here to the basement, Mark had a bunch of stuff on his kitchen table and I've narrowed it down to these items. We did have an old beat up camcorder that's just not gonna cut it, but we've got some stuff here that I think will get us to where we wanna be. Now, I was very excited to see that Mark had a digital SLR. Uh, this is a Nikon D7100. And Mark, you didn't realize that this can actually output HDMI video, right? I did not. I knew it shot some video, but I didn't know what. So this particular Nikon can do clean HDMI, which means you can get a full 1080p 30 out its HDMI with a really nice, sharp, and clear image because you can choose your lenses and everything else. So. Uh, we're going to use that camera to look at the saw for detail because that's a really good camera and we're going to make use of it. We'll need to get an external power source for it eventually. Uh, he also has a cam link here, which he had bought for the other camera he was using. Uh, this is a fairly inexpensive device, just over 100 bucks. I think you paid for this, Mark, right? Correct, about and, 119 And I reviewed this a while back, and this plugs into the USB port on your computer, and the other side is an HDMI input. And the software we're going to be using, OBS, loves these things. So they're very easy to get up and running. So we'll be uh, plugging the camera in to this for the computer. Uh, he also has a couple of cell phones, actually three cell phones, an old Android Samsung phone here, along with an iPhone 8 and an iPhone Pro 11. And we're going to do something with a piece of software called NDI to use these as uh, additional cameras for a few different views. It's a little a bit of a hassle sometimes to get that working. I'll show you how to get it all up and running, but I think it's going to add some additional camera angles for us without having to buy any additional cameras. We've got cell phones here, we're gonna use them. And then uh, this little thing here is gonna be Mark's camera for now. Again, we're gonna start with what we have and then we'll get more equipment later as we uh, figure out what Mark's audience is looking for. Uh, this is a Logitech 1080p camera. It's a bit on the older side, but it has a decent microphone for Mark's audio, and it will look good enough for him because you want to have an image of yourself when you're doing a YouTube channel. It's very important. It's a personality-driven thing. Uh, so when Mark is explaining something to his audience, it'd be good to cut to him so they can see what he looks like. He can interact with the audience a bit. And this webcam is going to be better than what you might have built into a computer because it is 1080p. Again, not the best, but it's good enough for us to get started with. Now, the one thing that I brought to the mix uh, is the computer here. This is that Lenovo IdeaPad 330S with the Ryzen that we looked at the other day. Uh, Mark has a couple of Macs here that could probably run uh, OBS, but they're definitely on the older side. And those Macs need to get their operating system updated. And if we update those Macs, he can't run Dreamweaver anymore for his website. So we said, you know what? We're going to bring one piece of equipment in here, cheat a little bit. Uh, but this computer is running with that AMD Ryzen processor it is really good for a basic OBS installation. It's very um, efficient at doing that job, surprisingly so. Uh, you can see the series that I did on these Ryzen laptops the other day to get a feel for uh, what you can do with what really is a sub $400 laptop. It's pretty remarkable. Uh, now, right now we're on Wi-Fi down here. One thing I recommended to Mark is that he bring in an ethernet drop down here because for streaming you want 
a real reliable connection, and that's what Ethernet's going to bring you. Uh, the good news is, is that he does have 5 gigahertz AC Wi-Fi in the house, which should help us when we get the smartphones connected, but it would be better to have that access point down here so he has a much closer Wi-Fi access point to connect to. So that's what we're going to start with here, and I hope we'll get maybe three camera angles out of what we have available to us, and we're going to get all this equipment in place, and then we'll see how OBS can get configured. So let me show you what we've got set up here. By the way, Mark had some lights already that he got super cheap on Amazon. What were these called? These Invisi? These are Invisi, okay. either I-50 or 150 lights. And they're all like synced up together and they have a nice diffuser on them too. And I guess if you change the setting on one, they all update automatically. Yes, they, right? you can change the, the Kelvin temperature. So if you want a nice warm light or mm -hmm. a, a really high number and you want a, a, a really uh, cold light, you can adjust that plus the strength from 10% to 90 or 100%. So there's some really good deals out there. Right now he says these are not available, so we'll have to look and see if they're out there. I'm sure there's similar lights there. There's a lot of inexpensive LED lights that you can get for a setup like this, probably for well under $400 as Mark was able to find here. Uh, so let's look at the cameras that we have set up. So I put the webcam over here, and you're gonna be surprised by how good this looks. This camera is, I think, four or five years old at least, and it's good enough for what we're gonna do. Uh, it's also going to be our audio source at the moment. One of the things that I'm going to recommend for Mark down the road is maybe to get a camcorder uh, with a, like a lavalier mic or something that he can wear because the saw here is going to make a lot of noise, which might drown out his, his voice occasionally. But he's got a nice baritone to it, so I think uh, he'll do a little better than I would, perhaps, uh, in front of the saw. Now, over here is his Nikon uh, D7100. And we're going to run an HDMI cable out over to the laptop. And that's going to pick up the detail of what he's doing here on the saw. He's going to have that zoomed in real close because he wants to show the detail of what he is cutting. And we're going to plug it in to the cam link that I've connected to the USB 3 port here on the laptop. This is just an HDMI connector. So I'm just going to take that HDMI and just pop it right in there. And when we're ready to go into OBS, we'll have everything up and running. Now, Mark has got two little stations to his workload here. So he uh, cuts here at the saw, but then as he's cutting, he's assembling the puzzle on the table here because he wants to make sure all the pieces fit. Right, Mark? Is that Correct. Yeah. And then also I want to make sure I don't have any seams occurring. Mm -hmm. You don't want large travel distances where there's not an interlock. So, yeah, it just kind of gives me a visual. Visual of what he's doing. So what we're going to do over here... Uh, because we don't have another camera easily accessible to us, we're going to take one of the smartphones and we're going to use NDI from NewTek, which is a uh, wireless transmission protocol, to send video out of the phone over to the computer running OBS so he can very easily switch to this overhead view and show people exactly how all of this comes together. So we've got a three camera shoot now. We've got Mark right here so he can talk to his audience. We have the Nikon camera here looking at the cutting, and then we're going to have one of the smartphones here pointed down at the puzzle as he reassembles things during the production process. So that's how this is going to go. All right, let's now configure OBS, and I'm going to start with a caveat that there are probably thousands, millions of hours of content on OBS and doing things properly. What we're looking at here is to do things good enough to get started. And then, of course, you can dive into those tutorials to learn more about how to get the most out of the software. So let's get all these inputs into OBS and see how we can switch between them. All right, so we've installed OBS. And what we're going to do first is add the webcam to the mix. Uh, now, before we do that, I do want to set the webcam audio as our microphone audio. And you can see we've got Mike Aux here bouncing. And what I did right before we got started was set the... A mic on that camera to be our microphone. So I hit the gear icon here. Let me go back out so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I hit the gear icon here. I went to properties and I have microphone here set to the webcam because that's the microphone I want to use for now. And this is a stereo microphone on this thing too. It's pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is build our first scene. And I'm going to rename the scene here by right clicking on it and clicking rename, I'm gonna call this Mark uh, because I wanna have plain English scenes here. Now the way OBS works is you switch between scenes and scenes have sources in them and we're going to add the webcam as a video source. I'm going to go over here to video capture device. I'm gonna call this Mark camera. 
I'm going to click OK. And when I do that, we're going to get a dialog box up here with some options. And there is my webcam, uh, which I'm going to select here. Now, this webcam is a little weird in that it defaults to like this square here. And I found I have to uh, kind of override it with a custom setting. So I'm going to go to custom here and I'm going to go over to 1920 by 1080. And that should fill up the screen here for us. And there we go. We've got our webcam on screen. I'm actually really impressed with the image quality of this. It doesn't do well with fast motion, but for a talking head, it's perfect for uh, the application that we're doing here. So we've got our first scene now set up, which is Mark. So now we're going to build another scene, uh, which is going to be the saw. And we're going to call this saw. Keep it simple. So we're going to hit OK here. And now what I'm going to do is hit the Add button here. And I'm going to do another video capture device. And this time we're going to call this saw camera. And I'm going to hit OK. And now we're going to get that same dialog that we saw a minute ago. And this time we're going to switch over to the cam link, which we've plugged into the USB port here on the computer. And look at that. There is, I'm going to put my hand in front of the camera here so you can see it. Uh, there is our digital SLR. And this one's coming in at the resolution that I was hoping it would come in 1080p. So I'm going to click OK here. And again, there's a lot you can do to get these images more refined, but now we have the saw and I can switch very easily now between me, uh, which is on Mark's camera and the saw. And you can see just by clicking here, you can go back and forth and do live video switching. So we've already got ourselves here a video switcher. And if we were streaming live or recording, this is what the recording would show. Pretty cool stuff and everything is just hardwired in here. Now, one other thing you gotta be careful about here is to make sure that you disable audio from any camera that you don't want to hear from, because every time you switch to that other camera view, you might end up with echoed audio coming from two different sources. So what we're going to do here on the saw cam is disable its microphone, because we only want the webcam to be what we hear, and every additional camera you add, you'll want to do this as well. Uh, now, the next thing we want to do, though, is get the smartphone going. And before we get the smartphone going, I want to show you the app we're using, and then we'll look at how to get that phone integrated wirelessly into our OBS setup here. All right, so for that overhead shot we're going to get here on the table, we're going to use the NewTek NDI app. And this app will broadcast the video from the camera over the network that we can then bring into OBS. Now this can be very problematic. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got a really decent Wi-Fi signal to make this work. And you, again, wanna make sure you've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi here because it's very unforgiving for poor network conditions. And this is not gonna work well under uh, many circumstances. So test it out first before you go live. Uh, do me a favor there. Uh, so we're gonna click on the app here and load it up. And it looks pretty basic, right? It's just a camera. Uh, and if I hit this uh, NDI icon here, it will make itself available on the network. And then if I go over here to the gear icon, uh, there's a couple of things worth looking at. One is that you can use the back camera or you can flip it around to the front here. I haven't found a way to switch between uh, the two different cameras on the phone. You can do like a pinch to zoom, but I'm not sure if it switches lenses. I think it just relies at the moment on uh, the wide angle lens or the wider angle lens on most iPhones, but I'm sure they'll improve this app over time. The app is not cheap. It's about 20 bucks, but if it saves you from buying a camera, then it might be worth looking into. One other setting I'm going to adjust on here is the amount of resolution we're playing with. Uh, if you have an iPhone that supports 4K, uh, the phone will output 4K when it's in the highest setting here. And just to be safe, just to make sure we don't have any drop frames or network issues given where Mark's uh, access point is at the moment. I'm gonna set it at the midpoint, which is gonna output a 720p video, which I think is gonna be good enough for what he's trying to do over here. But again, this is something that we'll probably want to look at in the future as he works to improve what he's doing. And all we're gonna do here is just kind of mount the phone up on this uh, magnetic mount here that he has set up. It's got itself in place pretty good there. We're gonna to have to let the table settle off. He's got this arm, it's a little wobbly there, and we'll see how that uh, works in practice. And now the next thing we're going to do is bring in the video over NDI 
to OBS. Now to do this, you do have to download a plugin uh, that's free for NDI. I'll put a link to it down in the video description. They have a Windows installer if you're using Windows and it will go out and install the runtime that you need to make all of this work. So it's a couple of clicks, pretty easy to get going. Once it's in there, uh, we can go over and add this as another camera angle. So we're going to create a new scene and we're going to call this scene the uh, puzzle table. And hopefully Mark knows what that means. And then I'm gonna click okay. And now again, we went black because we have nothing in the scene yet. And this time, instead of adding a video capture device, I'm going to add an NDI source. And we've got that camera uh, lit up blue there, so we're good. And I'm going to call this the puzzle camera. And I'm gonna click OK. And then we're going to go over here to source name. Now, the way NDI works is that when you have an NDI camera on the network, it will just broadcast itself like, hey, I'm here. And then any NDI compatible device or software will see it. And here we've got our uh, Puzzle Guru 8P, his, his uh, eight, uh, iPhone 8 available to us here. Uh, one thing I am gonna click here is hardware acceleration, uh, just to have uh, the best efficiency on this low end computer here. If we can make use of that, we will. And I'm going to click okay, and there you go. You see that we have the image up. Now, one thing I'm gonna have to do here though is uh, bring out the size of this window a bit, because remember, this is coming in at 720p, and we want it to fill up the whole window here. So it will uh, do a little upscaling for us. And it's, again, not the most ideal way to go about this, but I think it's going to be uh, good enough to get started. All right, so now we're going to add a two-up view. And what Mark wants to do while he's recording is show him moving a piece from the saw table to the puzzle table. So we're gonna call this new scene two-up, and I'll show you the motion he's looking to do here in a second. And Mark's gonna watch here as I do this because he's gonna direct me as to how he wants these things laid out. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in our saw camera again. And what I'm gonna do is go over to video capture device, which is where we were before. And I'm going to go over to now an existing one because we've already set up a camera for Mark and the saw. So I'm gonna click on saw camera again. And what I'm gonna do now is actually make this window of the saw camera a little bit smaller and we can move this around a little bit in a second and then I'm going to add a second source and we're going to call this one an NDI source because this is our table that we had before again it's already in here because we have it as an existing device and there is our table so what I can do and Mark tell me if this is what you were looking for was to have one over the other like this correct the the saw going on uh, being the main one right and then somehow the other inlaid so that it didn't obstruct the view somewhere and right. that'd be great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just kind of do it maybe like so. And we'll leave, have a little bit of over, overhang here maybe just to give it a little room. Um, now in this black area here, if we added something to the mix, so just for an example, just so I can show you what you could do and you could bring in you know, maybe a, a background or a looping video or something, uh, that black area we could fill in with something. So for example, if I go back to our video capture device here and add your camera to the mix, just to show you what this can look like. Uh, and if I drag Mark camera here down below puzzle cam, you can see how you can get all three up at the same time on a $350 computer. It's crazy. It's pretty awesome. Um, so <laughs> now this doesn't look so great, so I'm gonna take that off. But you well, I'm could, sure we can lay it out better, but yeah, at the but same you time, put, not bad at all. Yeah, and you could put like your phone number, you could put stuff in there if you wanted to. So. Um, but let's do a quick little thing here. I might actually want to move this because I think things are going to move from left to right, right? So the, Yeah, that's good. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move it. And again, you can adjust this any which way you want. And the pretzel will be what I'm cutting. So yeah. that's the one that I can move the other side. I can slide it to the left right. more too. And so can I grab a piece off the pretzel? Yeah, go for so, it. So um, what I'm going to do here is just show, so he's going to have it on the saw here and he's gonna take it off the saw and then move it over to here. So you can see that transition. Right, and I'll use from here, the shadows, the over, lighting better. Yeah, we have to get all the lighting fixed to there. So you've got a really cool thing going here. Now you can see that the NDI video sometimes will glitch out on you and that's due to the Wi-Fi not being so consistent down here. Just, you know, what you're gonna block the signal, somebody might jump onto the network elsewhere in the house, all those things will impact it. But uh, generally, again, for, just using what we have, this'll work. You've got piece out of here, over to the overhead view and back again. 
pretty cool. It is very cool. And that was what you were looking to do, that's exactly right? exactly what I wanted And he was do. having to edit all this before, so now he can do this while he's recording, which I think is going to be awesome. Now, because we have both of these sources here, we also have to make sure we disable their audio uh, on here, or at least make sure it's still disabled. And sure enough, from where we disabled it before, both of those are muted out. So we just have the mic from the webcam here picking up audio. And now we can switch uh, between four different sources. We've got Mark, we've got the saw, we have the puzzle, and we have the two up. And he can switch between all of these while he's working and talk to his audience when they get the live streaming going or make a video as he's working, just like I do, uh, with more expensive equipment. But I think this is gonna work great to get you started. And it's actually more than what I had when I started because I couldn't do this on a computer back then. It's amazing what uh, you can do with stuff. So I think what we might do is maybe run a quick test here, uh, let Mark record and talk to the camera and see how this all looks. So Mark, um, why don't you take it out for a spin and see how, uh, how it works. So let's, let's have right, at let's it. let's do this. I got yep. my finger cuts on and yep. let's do some, uh, some puzzle cutting. And uh, I look at that camera yep. too, so, so say, cool. Say hello to your audience. Hey everybody, <laughs> Mark at mgcpuzzles.com and custommadepuzzles.com. Thanks for viewing my channel. Watch the camera to the, uh... Oh yeah, so let's do that. And then in a minute, I'll switch it over to the other one. So there we go, first puzzle piece on the new camera setup. All right. So let's go to your two up and we'll do another, yeah, uh, another do view there. So we'll do two up. So I'm just finishing up here, so I'm going to bring my piece over and reassemble as I go. So there you go. We got you going. We've got some work to do on audio and camera angles and stuff, but I think we're off to a good start here. I agree. And it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, OBS is free software. Uh, the computer is not quite free, but close to free. It's about 300 bucks and change. And you've got uh, really what I had to pay a lot more money for even just five years ago to get going from a multi-camera production standpoint. So I, I'm excited to see what you do with all this. I'm sure you're going to be doing a lot of tweaking to it. And hopefully now you can really get your content to be part of the workflow and not all of it. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And my viewers will be able to see what I'm doing off to the side. And when I'm not cutting, I mean, they'll see everything at the same time. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm really eager to see how the live streams do, because I think that's going to be something people will tune in and kind of get mesmerized by. Because you could probably go for two or three hours at a clip. Right? I, up to three hours at a shot. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be kind of cool. And the really cool thing about live stream is I'll be able to interact with them. I can read what they're saying up on my monitor up there. Right. And uh, I'll look on YouTube. Cool. Well, I'm going to be around. I'm sure you'll be calling if you have trouble. I definitely will. <laughs> so uh, we'll get, you know, we'll get all the kinks worked out of the system here. I think the big thing is getting some audio uh, for you that can kind of drown out the sound of the saw. Um, so I think that'll be one thing, maybe not so much on the live stream, but I think on recordings, people might want to hear you a little bit more clearly. So we'll mm -hmm. play around with that a little bit. But well, we do have that one boom mic, I think you said I have upstairs. Yeah, we, have, so, uh, yeah. we had a few rejected pieces of hardware upstairs, but that boom mic might be something we bring down and test, uh, test around a little bit. So lots more to do here, but we got Mark up and running and uh, he didn't have to buy any more equipment, which Nothing. is everything on hand, which is so, great. Pretty cool. so, um, <laughs> so where can people find you? You have uh, a YouTube they, channel. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, just do a search for MGC Puzzles and you'll find my videos and just click on my name. And you can also find me at mgcpuzzles.com and custommadepuzzles.com. And we're going to put a bunch of links down below so you can find all this stuff for Mark and uh, get one of his puzzles. They're good stuff. My yeah. kids love it. They were putting one together the other day. So he's got some really cool stuff. He can do custom puzzles too. So. Yeah, 90% of the puzzles I make are custom made to order. So you pick the image and send it to me. You tell me what size, what piece count. It's all custom. And then about 10% of the puzzles I currently make, I um, pre-cut. And I have those, uh, or some of those are up on my Etsy store, which you can also link to from my website, as well as my YouTube videos. So he is everywhere. <laughs> and and uh, thank you for letting me come out of my basement today and come to your basement. And thank and, you for uh, helping me out here. And one of these days, maybe we'll do, have you come to my basement and you can show me how to cut things. 
Okay, or whatever else, yeah, or put a puzzle together. I'll see how, how good his uh, spatial skills are. Yeah, give me a big, big, big piece. <laughs> yeah. So that'll do it for now. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, we'll do a follow-up as we uh, continue to help Mark develop his channel. And uh, definitely let us know down there and buy a puzzle or two, will you? That's it for now. Until next time, Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.